السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise is due to Allah May Allah's peace and blessings be upon his final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, There's a point that I want to make a remark regarding benefiting from the Quran Look, understanding the Quran, this is something but we're not talking about just looking at the meanings and understanding what the verse means. This anyone can achieve. Even a non-believer can achieve this. If he reads a book, he will understand. But the early scholars, when they talked about the, the gift of understanding the, Qur the Quran, they were talking about benefiting from the Quran, understanding of the heart. When the heart understands the meanings and then you act on these meanings, this is what is hard and difficult and this is what we're all seeking here and this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in different verses like in Surah Al-Baqarah the first verse what? guidance for the people of taqwa so Allah Azza wa mentioned in other verses it shows you the way for all the people but true guidance for the people of taqwa and since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the guidance and described those people who benefited with people of taqwa, scholars have derived and said the more taqwa a person has, the more guidance that he will get from the Quran. And it is of no surprise that you'll find many scholars, they vary in levels in terms of understanding the Quran and acting on the Quran. And subhanAllah, I remember, uh, I think it was Tafsir al baghawi which is a summarized version of Tafsir Thalabi in the introduction when they mentioned when, so, uh, when he mentioned some of the sayings of the early scholars regarding the Quran and the etiquette of the Quran there was one thing that I can't forget one of the scholars said if you wanted to if you wanted to, un, to study the Quran you go and recite it under a sheikh but then he said if you wanted to understand the Quran look at what he said he said purify your food and leave the sins. Purify your food. Make sure that what you eat is from a lawful way, from something lawful, and then after that he said, and leave the sins. Why? Because these are the things that are blocking you from really benefiting from the Quran. We, we sit here, we, when, we, when the Imam was praying, SubhanAllah, we heard the same verses, but was the faith the same? Was our Iman the same? No, some people might have benefited and reached high levels of khushu' while others were just sitting there standing waiting for the imam to finish and do ruku' why is that subhanallah these are blessings from allah but it depends on how you were the rest of the day so understanding the quran is something and benefiting from the quran this is what's between you and allah purify your heart and subhanallah the doors will be opened it doesn't matter what shaykh you study under. It doesn't matter what books you read. It doesn't matter if you memorize the whole Quran. Oh, we've seen it a lot and a lot. You find a person memorized the whole Quran. He went through a lot of tafsirs. He can't find khushu'. And he says, well, he can't. When he recites some verses regarding hellfire and some verses that should make you fear Allah, find him after two seconds, after one minute, joking and laughing. What happened? So purify your hearts to really benefit from the Quran, okay? Now we start with chapter of Inshiqaq, Surah Al-Inshiqaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts this chapter by saying, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ انشقت وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ Inshaqqat, split open. And when, we, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here describes the sama, it means the, all the heavens. And there's a point that I want to make regarding the heavens. All that we see here regarding the galaxies and the, you know, what, what they see in the telescopes and this is just the first heaven. We're still in the first heaven. This huge universe that they're talking, this is just the first heaven. Okay, there's seven heavens and no one is allowed to enter the second heaven except with permission. This is what they talk about. But the, this, whatever we see now, this is just the first heaven. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying when the sky has split, and in other verses, it was mentioned that the heavens will be opened like gates. Look at this. وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا وَحُقَّتْ وَأَذِنَتْ It has responded to its Lord. 
it had obeyed the command, the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah commanded it to open and split and it has responded, to obeyed the commands of Allah. وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا And then look at this. وَحُقَّتْ And was obligated to, to do so. Why won't it obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who has created it? وَحُقَّتْ And to show you that this heaven, which is a much more complex creature than us mere humans, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded it to split up, it obeyed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَحُقَّتْ Why won't it obey the command of its master, the command of its creator? It's like we mere humans, Allah is commanding us with a lot of commands, and then we think, hmm, should we obey or not? And some of us don't obey. SubhanAllah. And who is a greater creature? Obviously the heavens. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also men mentions another great creature, which is Al-Ard. The earth. وَإِذَا الْأَرْضُ مُدَّتْ وَأَلْقَتْ مَا فِيهَا وَتَخَلَّتْ Again, وَأَذِنَتْ لِرَبِّهَا Again, it's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It obeyed the command and it was obligated to do so. It's a command from its Lord, the Creator, the Master. Okay, Ard Muddat, they said it's Al Mad, it extended. And when it did extend, everything that was in it was cast out, relinquished. So this includes obviously the graves, the people that were buried in the earth will be resurrected, will be leaving the earth. This chapter, chapter of Inshiqaq, as you will see, is like a wake-up call. It's like a wake-up call for you to understand that when you're in a state of heedlessness, you know, you're so conditioned with this world. And then this chapter, you recite the chapter, you look at the meanings, it's like a wake-up call. SubhanAllah, what am I doing with my life? This is something that's going to come near. Where am I from these words? Where am I from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And we will see, we'll come back to this verse that we're we'll discussing here. Direct speech from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to mankind. Ya ayyuhal insan, what? Innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan famulaqih. So you are laboring towards your Lord with exertion, with, you know, this whole world from one state to the other, laboring towards you. Look at the word, the kadih. It means something that, will ex something that needs force. You're exerting effort. And this is something that's tiring you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that this is general for all people, believers and non-believers. إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ kadha. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention that the laboring will be towards your Lord? Because you're going closer to Him. How is that? Because your every day that passes is a day that you'll be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning closer to the recompense, closing, closer to the account that will happen on the Day of Judgment. The Day of Judgment gets closer every day, and your death gets closer every day. And your world, whether you're following your desires, or you're following, Allah, uh, following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either way you're exerting force. You're putting effort. So don't understand from this, this is just for the believers or just for the disbelievers. This is general. Those who worship Allah, they're putting effort, they're exerting force, what? Towards worship. And those who are fulfilling their desires and running after wealth and this dunya, they're also exerting force, putting effort, but towards the wrong cause. So everyone is working in this dunya. Everyone is working. But obviously, the objective is different. Their main goals is different. And فَمُلَاقِي And you will meet it, and you will meet it. You'll find that in your tafsir it says meet it. Meet it or him. Meet him. Okay, these are two opinions. Uh, these are two opinions from the early scholars, and basically they're the same. Will, does it return to Allah, or is it return to, to the labor, the force, the work that you do? Either way, both are the same. Because if you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll be presented with your deeds. And if you meet your deeds, that will be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So both meanings are right, and they're the same thing. The conclusion is one. So there's no real dispute here. And what's interesting, there's a hadith that talks about this. That we in this dunya, we're just working. We're putting force. And we're trying to reach something. Whether you are a believer or disbeliever, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the Arba'in Nawiyyah, he said, Kullun nas yaghdu. Kullun nas yaghdu. Faba'i'un nafsah. Famu'tiquha aw mubiquha. So, in the hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said, Kullun nas yaghdu. Everyone is moving forward. Faba'i'un nafsah. Everyone is selling his soul. He's exchanging his soul with something. Famu'tiquha aw mubiquha. End of the day, you're working this dunya. You're doing what you want, you're following what you want, but end of the day, your soul, you'll be putting it one of two places. You will either set it free and put it in paradise, or put it in a cage, or the other option, you'll be putting it in a cage and hellfire. Destroying it. This is based on your de the decisions that you make in this dunya, and based on your actions. Okay. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the two types of people. SubhanAllah, it's like a wake-up call. This is something that we will all see. This is something that we will all experience. You're going to be one of these two. There's no third person. You could either be from the first group or the second group. First group. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ those who will get their book of deeds and their right with the right hand. Okay. And the other group will be getting their books with the left hand behind their backs. Okay. Now pay attention to this point here. Al Hisab, the account. Some of you will hear this for the first time. It's very important. There are a lot of misconceptions regarding this. So please pay attention for these two verses. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ What? فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا So those who will be getting their books, the right hand, they'll be given, they'll be given an easy account. An easy account. What does it mean to have an easy account? But first when you read the verse, an easy account. Do you think a person who will get an easy account will be punished? The context of the verse shows you. Those, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that those will have an easy account, is it possible that they will have an easy account and end up in, in hellfire? No way. Exactly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will overlook a lot of things. Because you did your job in the dunya. You were very strict with yourself. And you had a hard account. A very harsh account in the dunya. You between you and your soul. Why did I do this? Why didn't I do this? Why did I do sin? And you always, you know, you haven't, you're very difficult with yourself. But as a, a reward for this, and the hereafter you'll have an easy account. And those who will be getting their books, in the right hand. So those who will be getting their books, receiving their books in the right hand, they will be of the people of paradise. They will be of the people of paradise. And what's going to happen is that, as the hadith, as the hadith mentions, Hisab and Yasir, an easy account, there was an example of this in the Sunnah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what the scholars say, will say to a person, who will get his book in his right hand, لَقَدْ عَمِلْتَ كَذَا وَكَذَا يَوْمَ كَذَا وَكَذَا وَعَمِلْتَ كَذَا وَكَذَا يَوْمَ كَذَا وَكَذَا You did such and such on that day. And you did such and such on the other day. What does the servant say? أعرف, I know, I know, Ya Allah, I know. He did not say after that why. Here is the easy account. He did not say why. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say why did you do so. He said, فَإِنِّي سَتَرْتُهَا عَلَيْكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَأَغْفِرُهَا لَكَ الْيَوْمِ I have concealed it in the dunya. Nobody knows of it. Okay? I have concealed it. I did not show it to the people. 
and on this day it will be forgiven. This is an easy account, subhanAllah. And look at this. Yani, aren't we ashamed of ourselves? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conceals our sins. Nobody knows what we do except Allah. And He conceals it from the people. And some, some of us, if people know what we do, Wallah, they'll spit in our faces. But subhanAllah, Allah conceals it. And nobody knows but you and Allah. Number one, whatever is concealed, keep it concealed. Whatever you do between you and Allah, if you sin, you know it's haram and you want to go back to Allah, do not say this to the people. Do not tell the people that I did so and so. It is haram. Okay, it's, it will be a grave sin. And number two, you should be ashamed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if it's forgiven, even if you know, if end of the day it will be forgiven, you should be ashamed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that Allah sees this and knowing that these will, it will be written in your book. And you should also understand Allah's mercy. And you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being sincere in worship, by, you know, loving Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanak, look at this Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can punish all His creation, yet He conceals their sins and He gives them a chance and He forgives. Subhanallah. So this is the easy account. This is the easy account. What about the harsh account, the difficult account? The difficult account, they will be asked about every single favor that Allah has given them. Not only that, whatever sins they have done, every single sin, why did you do so? It's an interrogation. If an interrogation occurs, that person will be of the people of hellfire for sure. What will you answer Allah? Because what will you answer? What excuse? You will never have any excuses. And those are the people who will get their books left hand behind their backs. So these, will, these people will have a difficult account. Well, the people who will be getting their books with the right hand will have an easy account. Okay, now go back, going back to the verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأَمَّا مِنْ أُوْتِي كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا And return to his people in happiness. Okay. Where will he return? Where, where is, where, 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 what people is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about here? وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ He's not going to go back to the dunya. Then where is he going? What do you think? In Jannah. His family, his people. It could be his wives, it could be, you know, his house. It could be his people. It's his people, his family in Jannah. In Jannah. وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ Okay. فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا did Allah mention anything regarding what he was going through in dunya? He didn't say anything how he was in dunya. Why? It's not important. Was he struggling in the dunya? Did he have enough money in the dunya? Was he having a lot of hardships in the dunya? This is not important. Khalas is going back to his family in paradise. It's not important how he got here. What's important, where is he going? He's going to paradise. Alhamdulillah. Regarding if he was going through a lot of difficulties, everything will be forgotten once he enters paradise. Alhamdulillah. So he's happy. Alhamdulillah. These are the successful people. He's going to his family, to his wealth, to his houses, to his palaces, to his gardens, to his servants. Alhamdulillah. Before that, this verse. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in the hadith, he said, Man nuqish al hisab. If someone says, where do you get this easy account is like, uh, is there any evidence regarding easy account and difficult account? Well, yes, the Sunnah, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, Man nuqish al hisab. Yawm al qiyamah rudhib. Man nuqish, whoever is interrogated on the day of judgment in the account, then he'll be entering hellfire. So Haisha said, doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِي كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينَ The verse, فَسَوْفَ يُحَازَ بِحِسَابِ يَسِيرًا He said, this is not the interrogation. This is عرب, a presentation of your deeds. This is the حِسَابَ يَسِيرًا Your deeds will be presented to you. Presented to you, and you will be asked some questions, but you will not be asked, why did you do so? There will not be an interrogation. But نِقَاش, an interrogation, those who will be interrogated, definitely they'll be of the people of hellfire. So is that going to be people who's going to get their books with their right hand? 
or left hand interrogation? Left. That's that's your okay. <laughs> left. Yes. Those who will be getting their books. Yes. With the left hand behind their backs, these are the people who will be interrogated. Okay. So this is the uh, difficult uh, account, harsh account. Now, look at the other group. He didn't mention here, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did not mention taking the book with the left hand. He mentioned behind his back. Ibn Kathir said, look, it's either, you're either going to get your book with the right hand or left hand. And those who will be getting their books with the left hand, it's going to be behind their backs. Some scholars said, no, there'll be three types, one with the right hand, the other with the left hand, and the other behind their backs. But either way, they don't differ that the only people who are going to be entering paradise are the ones who will be getting their books with the right hand. Wallahi, yeah, people, yani my friends, my brothers, it's a great day. When the books will be flying, you don't know where you'll be getting your book. So subhanAllah, if you get your book with the right hand, alhamdulillah, whatever is going to come after that is easier. But if that book doesn't land on your right hand, lands on your left hand, behind your, uh, that's bad news. Now we have the opportunity to go back to Allah. We have, now we have the opportunity to do good deeds, to repent to Allah. So take advantage of these, these minutes that we have. It could be one minute that will make a difference in your heart, in your life. So take advantage of this. Do not leave things for last second. You don't know when is the last second. Okay? It's not a fixed time. You don't know when that time will come. Are we guaranteed to leave this message alive? We don't know. We don't know. So what's going to happen? Those will be getting their books behind their backs. He will cry out for destruction. Why? He wants to be destroyed. He knows what's going to come after that. He's going to be in a place. There's no escape. It doesn't matter how much. He, death will be like a gift for him. He will wish for death. Compared to what he's going to be experiencing in that place. SubhanAllah. Enter to burn and blaze. Allah then mentions what, how he was in the dunya. The believer, he did not even mention how he was in the dunya. Because it doesn't matter. He's going to, to Jannah. It doesn't matter. Even if you're, you know, miserable life in the dunya, you're going to be forgetting this when the first dip in paradise. But those who will be going to hellfire, best case, they had a good life in the dunya, which will be absolutely worthless. <inaudible> indeed, he had thought, indeed, he had once been among his people in happiness. Yeah. But subhanAllah, this limited happiness, what good will it be once you enter hellfire? إِنَّهُ كَانَ فِي أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا إِنَّهُ ظَنُّ Yahur going back. So indeed he thought that he would not return to Allah. So this means he what? He believed in the hereafter? Does that mean he believed in the hereafter? No. He disbelieved. صح. إِنَّهُ ظَنَّ أَنْ لَنْ يَحُورُ بَلَا إِنَّ رَبَّهُ كَانَ بِهِ بَصِيرًا But yes, indeed his Lord was ever of him seeing. Look at this verse. This is a person who did not care about the hereafter. The problem is that some people, because of their lack of belief, they say, well, they don't think about the hereafter. They don't think about Allah looking at them. They don't think about hellfire. But the fact that you're not thinking about these things does not mean that they do not exist. Some people, they have no worries regarding the hereafter. And they think, they say, when you mention the here, they say, no, no, don't mention these things. Yahi, khalas, just live your life, don't mention these things. Yahi, if I don't mention it, that's not going to change the outcome. If I do not mention it, hellfire is still there. Hereafter is still there. Death is waiting for you, regardless if I mention it or not. So me mentioning it and preparing you for the hereafter is much better, wallahi, for you to take advantage, to take action. And not to be in trouble. If you're going to say, no, I'm going to ignore all this, I'm going to live my life, fine, ignore it all you want. 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna rabbahu bala, inna rabbahu kana bihi basira. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing, he sees you. And your good deeds, your actions will be written. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears, فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالشَّفَقِ وَاللَّيْلِ وَمَا وَسَقْ وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا اتَّسَقْ Three things that occur after each other. Shafaq is the redness in the heavens that you see. After Maghrib, you find redness. After the sun sets, there is some redness. This is Shafaq. As the Sunnah, the Prophet Muhammad says in the time of Maghrib, uh, sorry, the time of Isha, عند مغيب الشفق When the redness in the horizon disappears, this is the time of Isha prayer. This is where Isha prayer starts. So Shafaq is the redness uh, in the heavens after sunset. The place where the sun sets, this is Shafaq. وَاللَّيْلِ وَمَا وَسَقْ وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا اتَّسَقْ And by the night, okay, as, it, as it expands, and or the, there's another uh, meaning here, وَاللَّيْلِ وَمَا وَسَقْ Ibn Kathir mentioned, some of the scholars said, وَمَا وَسَقْ What it contained, what it gathered, because they said in, the night contains the stars, it gathers the stars. So, وَاللَّيْلِ وَمَا وَسَقْ وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا اتَّسَقْ When the moon becomes full. So three events that occur. So whenever the night comes, you find the, the redness in the heaven, and then, night, and then night starts, then you see the moon. It should remind you of these things. It should, should remind you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has swore by these things, by these three things that you see almost every day, he swore by these three things as a reminder. On what? لَتَرْكَبُنَّ طَبَقًا عَنْ طَبَقًا That you'll be surely, surely, wallahi, Allah is swearing by these three things that you'll be going through. You'll be experiencing state after state, as they say, as the verse, as the translator said, طَبَقًا عَنْ طَبَقًا You'll be moving from one state to the other. Meaning, you're alive now, you're going to be dead. You're going to be living in the grave. After that, you're going to be experiencing another state, which is, after resurrection, the hereafter. And look at the words. This is even to further emphasize, tawkid, to further emphasize. It's like Allah swearing again. This is how it is in Arabic. This lamb here. So when you see these three things, when Maghrib starts and then the night starts and then you see the moon, these three things, Allah swore by them. On what? That you will be experiencing these things. Death. What's after death? The hereafter. This should be a reminder for us when we see these things. So after all this, why will they not believe? And when the Quran is recited on them, they will not obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Him. Okay. بَلِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُكَذِّبُونَ Look, after all this, after all these signs, after all this, subhanAllah, beautiful verses, end of the day, those who do not want to believe, it's like a habit. Their, their, subhanAllah, their disbelief is like a habit now. They're just going to be disbelieving, no matter what happens. Even if Allah resurrects the dead to come back, to life and tell those people we've seen the other life, they will not believe. Those who will not believe will not believe. خلاص. بل الذين كفروا يكذبون. والله أعلم بما يعون. Allah is most knowing what they keep within themselves. فبشرهم بعذاب أليم. So give them tidings of a painful punishment. There's something beautiful here to understand. Beautiful benefit that some scholars have mentioned in the Arabic language. Bashir, Bashir, it's mostly used for good news. But why is it called Bashir? Usually, you say, when someone brings news, you say Bashir, Bashir. Bashir is news that will have an impact on your face, on your face, facial expression. So it's news that will make you smile. It's news that will make you smile. Good news that will make you smile. Hada, this is what they say. This is what Bashir means, usually means. But it could also mean. It would also mean something that is bad. So news that when you hear, it will have an effect on your facial expression because it's so bad. 
So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَبَشِّرْهُمْ Tidings of a painful punishment. Give them the news of the painful punishment that will scare them. فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ To everyone, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ For those who believe and do righteous deeds, for them will be an un uninterrupted reward. Okay, uninterrupted reward, it means there is no end to that reward. So people will be living in paradise, they will not be living paradise. It will be continuous reward in paradise. And also uninterrupted, during, their, during the duration, during their time there, their enjoyment, their enjoyment will not be interrupted. We're interrupted here every time when we want to enjoy something. You need to go to the toilet or you get a fever. If you're sick, it doesn't matter how much money you have. If you're sick, you cannot enjoy anything. Okay? If you're in a bad mood, if you go home and you get in, pr in trouble, you're in a bad mood, something happened, you cannot enjoy food, you cannot enjoy whatever you have, you cannot enjoy wealth. That's why, subhanAllah, you see many people, they have depression. Even though they have, subhanAllah, a lot of wealth, they have a lot of good things. When they're depressed, they cannot enjoy anything. They commit suicide. They'd rather die than enjoy what they have. In paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will be uninterrupted, continuous enjoyment. Nothing will interrupt you. Nothing. No toilet. You're not going to be going to the toilet. You're, not, you're never going to hear anything that is bad, that will bring sadness. Nothing. Everything that you will hear, salam, good news. Next chapter, Al-Buruj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts. Okay, so the first chapter we, we took in Shiqaq is like a wake-up call. This chapter talks about the good deeds that you do. If you do something between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, something between you and Allah, you might think that even though no one saw it, you could be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could raise you very high levels and you have gained Allah's love because of something that you have done between Him and you and nobody knows of it. But you will get the reward in the hereafter. Look at this chapter. Allah starts, وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الْبُرُوجِ Allah swears by the sky containing the great stars. وَالْيَوْمِ الْمَوْعُودِ وَشَاهِدِ وَمَشْهُودِ Okay, there are a lot of opinions regarding what is the promised day. Obviously, the promised day is resurrection. The, the, the hereafter, okay. يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ وَشَاهِدِ وَمَشْهُودِ Usually, if you have many opinions, take the most general opinion because it will encompass all the other opinions. The general opinion here, what do you have written? It's written Friday? Yeah, okay. Because it includes, Friday. there are some opinions that says Friday, but we take the most general opinion, which is, and by the witness and what is witnessed. So all the things that are witnesses and everything that is witnessed. وَمَشْهُودِ So every shahid and every mashhud. Every witness, shahid, and every mashhud, everything that is witnessed. Allah swore by these things. On what? قُتِلَ أَصْحَابُ الْأُخْدُودِ Cursed were the companions of the trench. Okay, what's the story here? In Sahih Muslim, you find the, uh, or Bukhari, it's an authentic hadith, you find the whole story about the king and the, you know, the, the young boy who was studying sorcery and ma magic and all. But regarding the verses here, it talks about the certain point of the story, which is the king is forcing people to disbelieve. And he has dug these trenches, filled them with fuel and flames, and said to the people, if you believe, you'll be thrown in these trenches. The only way for you to save yourself is to disbelieve. Very difficult fitna. And you'll find the word fitna used here. Very difficult test. Very difficult test. Being burned in this dunya or being burned in the hereafter. Very difficult test. And subhanAllah, these people are what? Their stories, these are people of the past nations. We don't even know their names. We don't even know the messenger. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept their story for us. And they have kept it as revelation. We recite these verses in salah. We worship Allah by reciting their story. They are not forgotten. What they have done for the sake of Allah was not forgotten. It's a difficult test, 
But look, Allah honored them and they, Allah made them an example for all the example for us until the end of time. We'll be reciting these verses, Ashab al Ukhdud, and we'll be discussing it. People will be discussing and taking, taking benefits from it and also knowing they're honored. Even in prayer, they'll be mentioned. Why? Because of the thing that they have done between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And obviously those who, who did punish them were cursed until the final day. Cursed were the companions of the trench. Al-Naridat okay, the fire full of fuel, we mentioned the story. Idhum alayha qurud, when they were sitting near it. So they saw everything and they deliberately killed the believers and they deliberately tested them. Okay, and they, to what they were doing against the believers, were witnesses. No excuse. For what crime? So their only crime. And they resented them not except because they believed in Allah, the exalted in might, the praiseworthy. It's like Al Aziz Al Hamid. Is he not worthy to be worshipped? Even though, so this is a crime, this is their crime for worshipping Allah. Al Aziz Al Hamid, Al Aziz. The one Aziz, subhanAllah, the exalted in might, the one who can defend, the one who can take punishment easily. But it's a test. Al Aziz Al Hamid, the praiseworthy. He is praised for everything. He is praised for this event. Some of you might say, but this is evil. They worshipped Allah, they were burned. It looks evil, it looks harm. But at the end of the day, look at what they got. They have become their examples now for us to follow. And they're honored. And now they'll, they'll be probably benefit. They're, they're enjoying their reward in, in the grave. And they'll be of the people of paradise. So, Al Aziz Al Hamid, SubhanAllah. Al Ladi Lahu Mulku Samawati Wal Ard, Wallahu Ala Kulli Shayin Shaheed. To whom belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth, and Allah over all things. Is witness. So Allah saw everything. He witnessed everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Now look at this verse. Inna alladheena fatanu al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat. Fatanu. The word fitna, fatana, sorry, fatana. The mo it's mostly used in Arabic to mean putting something on fire. They usually use it in purifying gold. They say, fatantu al-dhahaba wal-fiddha. If you put it on fire to purify it, fatantu al-dhahab wal fiddha If you put it over fire to purify it, to take all the impurities out, it becomes pure gold. And this is why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sometimes mentions trials as fitna. It purifies us. Trials purifies us. You're put in a test, and this test must be difficult. If you do the right thing, if you take action, and do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you, it's a fitna, it's difficult. You're being burned, but it purifies you. Just like the gold is purified. But here, in this context, what do we mean by fitna in this context? Is it a trial or is it burning? Look, the story is a trial. But here, in الَّذِينَ فَتَنُوا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ so Allah is talking about the disbelievers who did fit, who did, used the word fitna for the moon. So burning. In this context, it's burning. It's putting them on fire because they're literally taking the believers and putting them in fire. Okay. So fitna, you, you, and you understood the word fitna means, but in this context, no, it means burning, the actual burning. So in the fatna wa mu'minin wa mu'minat, thumma lam yatubu. Subhanallah. After this crime they have done, they disbelieved. They burned Allah's servants. They were calling people to disbelief. After all of this, Allah is saying, if they did not repent, they'll be burning. Which means, if they repented, what's going to happen? Allah will forgive. Allah will forgive. And yet still people think that they come to me. Some people say, I have done something that is unforgivable. You tell them, did you burn Muslims? Did you call to disbelief? Allah is saying, these people, if they did repent to Allah, Allah khalas, then this will save them. 
فلهم عذاب جهنم لا فلهم عذاب جهنم ولهم عذاب الحريق meaning if they did repent they will not get this punishment people Allah does not want to punish us it's not like Allah wants you know to punish the people no Allah is giving you chances if a person was in disbelief for years doing all kinds of sins and then Allah has give him, gave him this gift of repentance and he was sincere Allah will forgive everything not only that, everything will be turning into, all the sins will be turned into good deeds. All the sins will be turned into good deeds. Might sound, this is not fair. All the sins will be turned into good deeds. That means you'll have a lot of sins. Yes, this is Allah's mercy. You'll be getting a lot of sins. But why? Why, why is that? Because regret that, we'll, that he will be getting the heart, that repentance will be so strong, it will replace every sin with remorse and that remorse is a good deed this is one of the explanations that the scholars have had how is because they are sins how are sins turned into good deeds they said in the heart he will repent and that repentance is regret he will have regret in the place of every sin so he will be getting instead of every sin a good deed this is what Ibn Qayyim has mentioned when trying to explain this that they will be replaced with good deeds Who knows what are the conditions of repentance? How do we repent? Someone asks you, I want to repent. Uridu an atub. How do I repent? How do you repent, huh? Okay, number one, you stop what you're doing. Sins, you stop the sins. What else? What? Okay, no, still, still, we're talking about the repentance. He said, yes, this first condition, you stop the sins. Number two. N regret. Nadam. You said Nadam? Yes, Nadam, regret. Ibn al-Qayyim said, Ruknat tawba al-a'zam and Nadam, regret, remorse. This is the biggest pillar of, re of repentance. Without this, there's no repentance. You can say, Atusaghfirku atubu like one million times. If you do not have regret in your heart, that's not Tawbah. That is not Tawbah. Tawbah is not something you say on your tongue. Tawbah is of the actions of the heart. You stop the sin. Number two, you, uh, you regret. There should be regret in the heart. What's number three? Yes. Number three, you plan in your heart that you're not going back to these sins. These are the three conditions or pillars of a correct repentance. If you have these three, Insha'Allah, that repentance will be accepted and Allah will forgive all of your sins and will replace them with good deeds. This is what he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Here, what is the difference between Azab al and Azab al Yeah, they said they'll be getting, they have different opinions. Some of them said they'll be getting Azab Jahannam because of their disbelief and Azab al Hariq for the torment of the fire. So they'll be getting two punishments. Okay. So, the, but does that mean that it will be burning in this dunya? Allah alam. But they said, two punish, adab jahannam, adab al harif. Okay? Uh, this came into mind. I did not find someone, it came into mind. Adab jahannam, adab al harif. They said, there, these are two punishment. Punishment, some, some said, punishment for the disbelief and punishment for the crime that they burned the people. Hell is fire. Yeah, hell is fire. No, hell is not just fire. Hell is fire and other things. Not just, uh, some people think that hellfire is just fire. No. There'll be even, uh, there'll be a torment of coldness also in fire, in hellfire, in, uh, in Jahannam. Some people think Jahannam is just flames. No. There'll be a lot of different punishments. Okay. And we'll be seeing, we'll be seeing some verses, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ahqaba, yes, yes. Ahqaba. Time periods, meaning every time period, they'll be getting a different type of punishment. But inshallah, in the verses, we'll be going over some things that Allah mentions, different types of punishment, inshallah. Okay. Yeah. Is this uh, the same for Jahannam and Azab al Hariq? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I don't remember now. Did, was it mentioned that they were they burned? It mentioned that uh, you know, some things because you have to combine all the narrations. Allah alam. Allah. Yeah, yeah, Baghi, but did he mention the one in Sahih Muslim or the other ones? Because of some narrations that after that the fire burned the people. So some said, Allah alam. Inshallah, for next week on the group, we will be, we'll be inshallah, answering this question. Adabul Hariq. Okay, Allah Azza wa Jalla then says, Inna al ladina amanu wa amilu salihat lahum jannat un tajri min tahti al anhar. Dalik al fawzul kabir. So for those who believed and did righteous deeds, they will be getting jannat, gardens, which beneath it river, rivers flow. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Dalik al fawz al kabir. Look, this is the great attainment. This is the great prize. You see now in uh, raffle, you, in raffle tickets, they do lottery and they say the grand, the grand winner is so and so. Uh, this is the true, the true successful people. The true winners are the winners in hereafter because their prizes will be something unimaginable. It will be something for them. No one's going to be taking it away from them. It will be for all eternity. So those are the successful ones. And those are the ones who are really lucky. If you are a person who is on the straight path, doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you, obeying Allah, worshipping Allah, and then dying on the sunnah, dying while still in worship, in repentance, mashallah, you are a lucky person. And this is a great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has favored you over many, many, many people. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْكَبِيرُ Indeed, the vengeance of your Lord is severe. We have some people saying, look, do not fear Allah. You should only love Allah. No, that's not a complete worship. You should fear Allah and you should also love Allah. Look at this verse. Allah is saying, Why? So that we can fear Him. Allah loves us when we fear Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The messengers of Allah, they worshipped Allah in love and fear. The messengers. The most righteous people. You find these words in the Quran. They you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of love and out of fear. If you have love without fear, something is gonna get go wrong. If you have fear, you don't have, you're gonna lose hope. If you have fear, you don't have love, you're gonna lose hope. And if you have love, you don't have fear, you're gonna go transgress, you're gonna be doing sins because there's no fear that's stopping you. But if you have love and fear, Alhamdulillah. As some scholars have said, hope and fear, these are the two wings that the believer flies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hope and fear. You hope for Allah's mercy, you fear your sins. So this is one of the verses. When you worship Allah with this verse, you fear Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His vengeance is severe. You do not want to take Allah lightly. lightly. His vengeance is severe. You fear him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He originates and he repeats. Just like he originated the creation of the heavens and the earth, and then he will be repeating the creation of the heavens and the earth. Subhanallah. Al Ghafur Al Wadud. In Arabic, Ghafur is in the form of Fa'ul, Fa'ul. Which is an exaggerated, they say, من صيغ المبالغة, an exaggerated form, an exaggerated form to show that it's not just any forgiveness, he's not just someone who forgives. His forgiveness is strong, is immense, is huge. Al Ghafur. And then also Al Wadud, the affectionate. And again, صيغة مبالغة من الود, Al Wadud. He loves his servants, he loves his righteous servants. And the more righteous a person gets, the more love he will get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verse, yani if you worship Allah, you'll get forgiveness. He's al ghafoor and you get love from Allah. Wood, al wadud. What is the benefits of getting Allah's love? Three things. Three things from the sunnah. وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِ الْحَتَّى أُحِبَّ فَإِنْ أَحْبَبْتُ كُنْتُ Okay, so once you get Allah's love, you get three things. 
protection. Allah protects you from sins. If you reach this high level, khalas, Allah takes care of you. Allah protects you. You become a close servant. He protects you from sins. He removes away the things that will cause you to sin. That's one. Number two, He aids you on good deeds. You'll find good deeds easier now. So we always say, put the effort at the start. The start is difficult. You push hard when you start. But after that, it becomes easy. Many people find this. When they start on this path, they say, it's difficult. For we say, it's just you start difficult. Then he finds this, subhanAllah, I cannot live without this. This is very common when we're in, uh, in Medina. And here, you see old people coming with chairs for Fajr prayer. And you see young people sleep. The young people, they have the health. These old people, they're weak. But alhamdulillah, they get the aid because of all the years they used to worship Allah. Allah aided them. They cannot live without prayer. If you tell them they're, if they're sick, you know, they feel very terrible. Not because of the disease, because they miss out on Fajr prayer. This is what happens. This is the gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. al ghafur al wadud Okay. ذو العرش المجيد فعال لما يريد ذو العرش المجيد المجيد Okay, honorable It's here in the translation says honorable owner of the throne, yeah? Yeah, this is one Quranic recitation ذو العرش المجيد and there's another one ذو العرش المجيد So it's an honorable throne and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is honorable Allah's throne is also honorable from the other recitation. Okay, he does what he intends. No one will stop, no one will come between Allah and what he wants. If Allah wants a command, if Allah wants to do something, no one can enter, you know, can change something Allah wants. When Allah will punish, he will punish. No messenger, no angel, no one's gonna get between him and punish. When Allah wants to favor someone, to bless someone, to give someone gifts, no one will come between them and Allah's favors. So you ask Allah, doesn't matter who's against you, doesn't matter what the situation is, how difficult it looks, if Allah gives you, no one can take. And if Allah takes away from you, no one can give you. So put your heart your trust in Allah alone, not in these, you know, causes. We act on causes, but we trust in Allah. And then Allah mentions the past nations. Now, this is not something new. The nations that oppose the messengers with soldiers. And the two common and most popular are Fir'aun and Thamud. They had big armies against the messengers. What did the messengers have? Nothing. Compared to, the, to these armies, the disbelievers, they had nothing. Fir'aun wa Thamud. And what happened? For, they're both defeated. And both are examples for us to look at in the Quran. These are people who oppose the messengers. This is their punishment. So what you're going to do? The choice is yours. They have become examples for us, subhanAllah. Examples for the, for the people who disbelieve and oppose the messengers. Fir'aun wa Thamud. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, but those, who the, but those who disbelieve are in persistent denial. Just like the chapter before this. This verse is similar to another verse in the previous chapter. Which verse? Yes, yes. Yeah? This is the verse? Yes, yes. This is the verse? Yeah, and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And Allah, no matter what they do, you know, Allah will encompass them and their actions. And at the end of the day, where are they going to flee? They're going to a, a place where Allah can't reach them. Will they be able to defend themselves against Allah? Where are they going to go? Everyone's going to die. Everyone's going to be resurrected. There's no way to run. From Allah, there's no way to run. It's an honored Quran in a preserved slate. We go real quick, the final chapter. 
والسماء والطارق يس برضه You mean, why is Allah mentioning the stories to the uh, Okay, the translation, okay. Story of the soldiers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, okay, هل أتاك حديث الجنود فرعون وثمو الجنود story of the soldiers. What's the problem? Ah, la 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 la. Hadith al Junood. Who are Hadith? Which Junood? Fir'aun or Thamud? This is what it means. It's related. It's not separate. Hadith al Junood. The story of the soldiers. Who, which 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 nations are Allah is Allah talking about? Fir'aun or Thamud? It's related. It's one. Okay. Okay. The Tarq. The Sama'i and the Tarq. وما أدراك ما الطارق النجم الثاقب. Okay. Allah swears by the heavens. And a tariq. A tariq from tariqa, usually it comes at night. Someone that comes, here it says a nightcomer. Everything, usually Arab, the Arab will describe someone as a tariq. Man a tariq? Someone who comes at night. And here, obviously, the shooting star is at night. وَالسَّمَاءِ وَطَرَقَ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِقَ النَّجْمُ الثَّاقِبِ Pay attention to this. Allah said, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِقَ النَّجْمُ الثَّاقِبِ The piercing star, it is, it's what? Allah defining what here? Al-Najm al-Thaqib is what? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِقْ Al-Najm al-Thaqib, it is the piercing star. Yeah, so which? Al-Najm al-Thaqib is what? Al-Tariq. The first word, وَالسَّمَاءِ وَالطَّارِقْ Okay, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الطَّارِقْ And what can make you know what the night comer is, the Tariq? So the explanation of Al-Tariq is Al-Najm al-Thaqib. This is, as they say, a Quranic tafsir. A Quranic tafsir. So if someone comes and says, Atariq is so and so, we say no, we do not accept. We have a clear Quranic tafsir. Tafsir khas. Tafsir Quran bil Quran, sarih. Pure Quranic tafsir here. So no one can come and say, Atariq means so and so. Khalas, it, it says here. Quran, uh, the Atariq is al Najm al Thaqib. Okay? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He swore by these things that what? In kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafid. So every soul will have over it a hafid. I did not say protector, I said hafid. Why? Because hafid, when we look at the text, it means two things. It could mean a protector from the angels that protects you. It could also mean a hafid, someone who preserves your deeds. Meaning, whatever you do, it will be written. So both are correct. Yeah, these things. رقيب ما يرفض من قول العذي رقيب النق رقيب عتيد إذا تلقى المتلقيان على اليمين وعلى الشمال قعيد ما يرفض من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد yes so the angels on the left and right this is a hafid but also it could mean as the scholars have said angels that protect you with the command of Allah with the will of Allah it protects you from anything everything that happens to you except that something that Allah wills خلاص it leaves it so hafid comes for two things, protection and preserving of deeds. Everything is written. So two things. In kullu nafsin lamma alayya hafid. Okay. If someone disbelieves, is a disbeliever, and you come, you tell him, you don't come and say, look, look at the Quran. The Quran says, he said, no, I do not believe the Quran. The Quran, not only it tells you what to believe, but it also shows you how to think. This is very important. How to think, how to reach the right conclusion, the Quran shows you. Look at here. Ask yourself this question. For a person who disbelieves, let him look at himself. Let him look at how he was created. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, created from a fluid ejected. Okay. يخرج من بين الصلب والترائب إنه على رجعنا قادر. Okay. So 
He was created from a fluid which was ejected. Man who talks, who thinks, who argues, was created from this drop. Okay? And then this drop, once it was in the womb, خلاص, he has nothing to do. Even the mother, the woman, when the drop is inside her, she has no control. She's not creating the baby. It's not up to her. Sometimes she wishes that it, it, these, this process does not occur, but it occurs. And some people wish for the process to occur, but it does not occur. They have nothing to do with it, even if they seek medical attention. There is just limited things that they can do. It's still with the will of Allah. So this is where we say Allah created. Even the sperm drop. Was it created in you? Did you create it by yourself? No. Allah created it. Okay. So, in the so have you seen that which you emit? Did you create it or were we the creators? Allah created, obviously, not us. So here the Quran teaches you how to look. You want signs, you want something to increase your faith. Allah is telling you, look at yourself. How were you created? You were created from this drop. If you take a drop, okay, to a, a rational person, he said, you were one day this drop. It's surprising. We say, how? You say, how? How did this happen that this drop, you ended up becoming this human being? Allah created you. Allah made you go through all these processes in the womb of the mother, and then you became a baby, and then you grew up. And so he who created you this way, is he not able to resurrect you? Of course he is. Of course he is, subhanahu wa ta'ala. خُلِقَ مِنْ مَاءٍ يَخْرُجٌ بَيْنَ الصُّلْبِ وَالتَّرَائِبِ Emerging from between the backbone and the ribs. The backbone, a sulb. A taraib, the ribs. Look at this. Innahu ala raj'ihi la qadir. Indeed, Allah to return him is able. Innahu ala raj'ihi la qadir. So he who created you from this drop, he is able to resurrect you and create you again from the water. The, when, it, when resurrection occurs, They'll be pouring water, and then we'll be growing <coughs> from the bone, uh, what's it's called? It's the, the small bone in the spine. So anyways, إِنَّهُ عَلَى رَجْعِهِ لَقَادِرُ People will be resurrected. Allah created you from this drop. He is able to return him again. When يَوْمَ تُبْلَ السَّرَائِرُ The day when all the secrets will be examined. Okay, sara'ir. Secrets. So what is Allah referring to? All the good deeds that you do, they're secrets. Nobody knows of them. What's between you and Allah? Did you do wudu before coming to prayer? Nobody knows that but you. No one saw, unless those people saw, but nobody knows. You're doing this. The worship that you do between you and Allah, the belief that you have in your heart, nobody sees it. Person could be not believing, could be sitting with us, nobody knows. It's between you and Allah. But on that day, day of judgment, يَوْمَ تُبْلَ sara'ir. These good deeds that are in the heart will be tested and they'll be presented to the people. Look, in this dunya, everything that you do, no one will know of it. But in the hereafter, the people will be varying. Those used to do a lot of good deeds, it will show on that day. On that day, he will not have power in himself to do anything. He will not have anyone to aid him against Allah. خلاص. فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ قُوَّةِ وَلَا نَاصِرِ Okay, and then وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الرَّجْعِ وَالْأَرْضِ ذَاتِ الصَّدْعِ Okay, the sky, the heaven Someone sneezed? You say Alhamdulillah? Alhamdulillah If a person sneezes and he does not say Alhamdulillah Do we say Alhamdulillah? Yeah, we do not We do not If a person sneezes and he says Alhamdulillah We say Alhamdulillah if he does not say Alhamdulillah, you stay quiet. Okay? So if he says Alhamdulillah, you say Arhamukallah. If he does not say Alhamdulillah, you do not say Arhamukallah. Okay? A man was, because this happened with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu a man sneezed, the Prophet did not say anything. And then another man sneezed, said Alhamdulillah, say Arhamukallah. So the man who, sneezed, who said Alhamdulillah, we say Arhamukallah. Okay? 
The sky, that raj' raj' pouring water. That is sadr, al ard that is sadr, the splitting. Tasadr, sadr. It splits with growth. Growth. Plants. Innahu la qawlu fasl. Allah swears by do to, these two things on what? Innahu la qawlu fasl, the Quran. Qawlun fasl, it separates truth from falsehood. Wa ma huwa bil hazl, it is not a thing for amusement. Again, إِنَّهُمْ يَكِيدُونَ كَيْدًا وَأَكِيدُ كَيْدًا You do not worry about what people are plotting. Okay, you worry what's between you and Allah. If Allah aids you, خلاص, Allah will protect you. He has his plan. Just like your enemies, they have plans, Allah has his plan. Okay? إِنَّهُمْ يَكِيدُونَ كَيْدًا Yes, you have enemies and they are plotting against you. Should you fear them? Should you go and try? To become their friends, should you try to obey them? No. Allah is saying, وَأَكِيدُ كَيْدَ And He subhanahu wa ta'ala is planning. So, فَمَهِّلِ الْكَافِرِينَ وَأَمْهِلْهُمْ رُوَيْدَ Do not fear them, do not obey them. Go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here this is in the, because it's a Mecca verse, so allow time for the disbelieved the believers, leave them a while. Because this is a time of weakness, there was no fighting, nothing, خلاص. Just leave them and concentrate on your worship, conveying the message, obeying Allah, and that's it. So with this, alhamdulillah, we have finished. Inshallah, we'll continue, inshallah, we'll continue next week. هذا والله أعلم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. جزاكم الله خير.